So next, we're going to welcome a girl who's the high school <laughs> editor of her high school newspaper that has been newly digitized and also the editor of her school's yearbook. Please help me welcome Victoria Chu, who's going to give a TEDx talk about the importance that innovation can have on seemingly unchangeable ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Victoria. Yes. Have you ever looked at something and just thought, it would be so much better if only... This seemingly simple question can have remarkable results. It's exactly what has advanced mankind and given us some of our greatest creations. See, the world values innovation. It rewards those who can look at something, see the need, and fulfill it. And proof of this is the endless stream of iPhone models that Apple keeps putting out every single year. It seems like pretty solid technology, but the fact of the matter is that everything can be streamlined, sped up, or improved in some way to make it work harder, better, faster, stronger. And this is especially true of technology. So, this um, thing with technology is that it can be used to connect and link other people. And it's really tied into media because they're both used to keep people up with what's going on in the world. And for centuries, people have used printed media to accomplish this, but things are changing. With the emergence of the media and internet and the advancements of technology, people are becoming more and more interconnected and wired in and it needs to be addressed. Technology and society are linked together, and this brings me to my school's newspaper, MacSource. I've always loved writing and wanted to join a school newspaper ever since I was in, I don't know, seventh grade, maybe? So when I went to Archbishop McDonald in 10th grade, I joined MacSource as soon as I could. And it was all right, but the formatting at the time was very outdated, and the updates were extremely sporadic. So. Later on that year, what happened to MacSource was that it just fizzled out into nothing. Why? Well, there were a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason was that students didn't want to have to pay out of pocket for a newspaper that was full of old news. Readership was essentially at zero, and hardly anyone knew that we had a newspaper. MacSource hit rock bottom in my 11th grade year, and that was when the grade 12s in charge at the time dropped the paper after only about a month of publishing things. And as a result, the school, school administration actually took MacSource off of the club roster as a result. And to me, this was unacceptable. I'd always thought that the paper should be digitized, but at the time, there were a lot of insurmountable obstacles that were preventing my dream from really taking flight, as you could say. And even though I wasn't, it wasn't the right time for it to become a reality, I never let this vision die. When my friends and I became high school seniors, we decided it was up to us to save Maxor since no one else would. My friend Deborah suggested that we put our plan to action and try to revolutionize the paper. Did our plan succeed? I'd like to think that we're well on our way to redefining Maxor's. We've turned the paper into a successful publication that the students actually want to read, something that seemed almost impossible just a few years ago, and readership is at an all-time high. Currently, about 81.3% of the student body reads our paper, and we broke 10,000 views after four months of operation. The success was actually unbelievable. So why did we succeed when others before us didn't? The reason was, like I said, innovation. You see the problem, and you fix it. For us, the problem was the digital divide, if you will. Students didn't want to have to pay out of pocket for a paper that was full of something that they'd already read. And we knew that. We decided to give them what they wanted. So in the end, it all comes down to two things. And these two things have resulted in the creation of everything in history. And it all revolves around innovation and seeing the need and fulfilling it. So that's the first point, and the second one is to build a better mousetrap. That was a saying I heard once, and at its core it means taking something that has already been seen as something really great and making it even better. Because
because that's, that's what it all comes down to, really. You have to question things. You have to suggest ways to make things better, because even if people say that it's already been done, or that it didn't work before, that it's fine the way it is, sure, it might be fine, but it could be better. So what I want you to take away from this is to think of Steve Jobs. Now that was a guy who definitely saw the need and fulfilled it and built a better mousetrap. Through the improvement of existing technology, he was able to affect millions of lives, and his legacy continues to inspire others to do the same. See the need and fulfill the need. You can do it. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. I think your point is really great because, you know, in science and technology, creativity and innovation should really be the norm and not the exception.